In this video, we'll talk about using the shell method to find volume revolution when you have multiple functions and different axes are also involved. So the procedure for doing this is the same as it was in the previous case, mixing in the multiple functions methods we dealt with when doing the washer method. So the idea basically comes down to the volume is always 2 pi integral a to b of the radius times the height dx. We're talking here only about vertical axis of rotation. The next video will go into horizontal axis of rotations where you want dy integrals, but the process there is also the same. What it really comes down to is what's my radius, what's my height, and what are my bounds in integration? If you can figure out those four pieces, you just plug it in the formula and then it works the same way for that shape as well. And drawing a picture, like always, is going to be your best friend here to figure out sort of what graphs are involved and what the radius should be, what the height should be based on where things all lie on a picture. So you're going to find it super helpful to draw a picture for these problems to make sure you get an idea of how these graphs all relate to each other and can pick the right things for your radius and height. Once you have all this stuff, plug in and find from the formula. Let's see an example of how this might work. So find the volume obtained by revolving the region in the y-axis the graph y equals x squared, and the graph of y equals 6 minus x around the line x equals 6 using the shell method. So let's draw our picture here. y equals x squared is a parabola. The y-axis is the vertical line there in the middle. And 6 minus x is a line of slope minus 1. I'm just going to cut across this way. So the region I care about is this triangular thing here in the middle. And I'm revolving around x equals 6 which based on my picture is the line right here. And I want to do this using shell method. If you think about going back to this by washer method from before, this would not be a horizontally simple region because there's not always one function on the right. So you'd have to do this with two integrals if you want to do it with washers, but with shells, we could do it with just one. So with shells, we have our vertical segment here that we're going to rotate. Then to figure out what the radius is, what the height is, and where my bounds of integration are. Let's do the bounds first. So clearly I have x equals zero as one bound of integration. The other one should be where these two curves cross. x squared equals six minus x. And this polynomial factors, so they cross at x equals two. The minus three is on the other side, so I don't care about it. So there's my limits of integration. Now I gotta figure out what is radius and what is height. Well, the radius should be how far I am from the axis of rotation. So for a given segment here, the radius is this distance here. Now this here we know is at x equals six. So my radius should be six minus x if I'm at the coordinate x. Right, the point is what I care about is what is the radius at the coordinate x? What is the height at the coordinate x? So at some coordinate x, my radius here is six minus x, because that's how far I am away from the axis of rotation. The height should be the difference between those two functions at this point. So the height should be the top one, which is six minus x, minus the bottom one, which is x squared. So six minus x minus x squared is my height. But now with radius and height determined, I can then plug into the formula and solve for this answer. Volume should be two pi, the integral from zero to two, my bounds of integration, the radius times the height, plugging those two formulas in. Now we can expand, collect terms, and then integrate to solve this out. And that's what you get for simplifying. We then find the antiderivative, which gives us this, and then we can just plug in our endpoints. We'll plug in zero, everything goes away because that's all zero. If I plug in two, this gives me my entire integral and the volume here as a 232 pi over three. So that's the idea of using the shell method to find these volumes, even if you have different axis of revolution, different functions that are involved, you can all put it together to use the shell method to figure this out. The main thing that really comes down to is, can you figure out what the radius of the cylinder will be and what the height of the cylinder will be as a function of the variable you care about, and then work out the integral just like before to figure this out. As long as you can set up the cylinders appropriately and find the radius and the height, the shell method works just as well as anything else to figure out what these volumes of these solid revolutions are.